Uh, moving on, and if you're a man, going bald is often just part of ageing. But for a woman or a child, losing your hair can be devastating. But that's exactly what happens to hundreds of thousands of Aussies who suffer from a condition called alopecia areata. For most of us, life without hair is unimaginable. But at just 13, Michelle Law's hair began to fall out. It was coming out in the shower and when I woke up I would find a lot of hair on my pillow. So it was sort of a gradual process but it happened quite fast. I wasn't scared, I was more just worried about what people would think. I remember there was one particularly dramatic visit back home where there was a lot more scalp on Michelle's scalp. There's a lot more hair in the bathtub. Michelle soon became virtually bald, making life at school a struggle. One group of girls and they would just ask me constantly, like, you know, Michelle, we're your friends, why won't you tell us what's wrong with you? I remember saying, well, I'm not dying. And then they said, well, obviously you're not because you'd be dead by now. <laughs> and so I sort of ran to the toilets and burst into tears. Michelle has alopecia areata a condition that affects 2% of the population, or about 450,000 people. It's caused by the body's immune system attacking its own hair follicles. But doctors still don't know why. There is no cure. And whilst you can regrow hair, the hair loss will often come back again after a couple of years. In terms of what makes it come back again, that's also part of the frustration because we don't really know. It's really bizarre. There's this huge industry on hair removal and it's, you know, wax your armpits, wax your legs. That's totally fine, but if you don't have any head hair, that's a big problem. Alopecia tends to develop before the teenage years or in middle age. People often behave very morosely around them. And I remember one story of a, of a child asking her mother, when am I going to die? because she just picked up from everybody the way they were reacting to her that there must be something dreadfully wrong with everyone assumed she was having chemotherapy. It's a reaction that seven-year-old Jessie Wilcox has felt all too often. Last year, Jessie designed a T-shirt to stop people gawking at him. Please don't stare, it's just no hair. Jessie has now lost all of his body hair. I usually say I've got alopecia and it's a disease that you've got no hair, so you might not see me with hair but I'm still the same. People do say things at times or they stare a little too long. You know, you do get protective but then all we have to do is just look at how Jesse's reacting and if he's not bothered by it, then we're not bothered by it. Jesse's mum Melody is worried about how hard things will get when he's a teenager. Jesse's been very brave and he's and he's conquered a lot of his fears but there will be things to come. To overcome attitudes around baldness, Michelle Law now writes, blogs and does presentations to help others cope with their alopecia. I'm ready for bald women to feel empowered. Because as a bald woman, I don't want to merely survive. I'd much prefer to live. But she says more people need to open up and share their experiences to break the stigma of being bald. People don't realise how common it is because nobody talks about it and it's why people feel so uncomfortable about themselves and feel like they have to keep this secret. And for guys, baldness is sort of seen as, it's more normal for guys, whereas for girls, it's, it's seen as some sort of failure in you know, being a woman or being beautiful. Great people, awesome sharing their stories and also just talking about it, like mm. getting people to think about it because you don't. Mm. Mm. I mean, isn't it amazing how much hair matters to people? Mm. Too much, too little, like we're obsessed with it. It's, it's weird stuff, mm. but, we, mm. but it really, really matters. It defines us. And mm. big thanks to Michelle and little Jessie too for sharing your stories with us.